Booster. Go. Retro. Go. Vital. We're go flying. Guidance. Guidance, go. Launch control, this is Houston. We are go for launch. I feel the need. The need for speed. You've got to ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Join us or die. And welcome to Mark Groupie Outdoors, the podcast. I am your faithful, somewhat reliable, somewhat inconsistent host, Mark Groupie, and here with the erstwhile millennial producer, Ryer. Say hi, Ryer. Howdy, everyone. Well, we're winding down towards the end of waterfowl season. It's been pretty inconsistent for me here, and I know for a lot of people, I've had some days where... uh, knock the crap out of them and the next day go to hunt the same blind and not hardly shoot anything. And from what I hear, a lot of people have had the same experience. See, some people are fairly consistent, but we have not been wanted to make some more waterfowl videos this year, but, uh, frankly, it really wasn't, uh, worth the effort. And the times that we did try, we, uh, didn't end up with what we wanted to, but, uh, but it's uh, middle of January, end of January, and we're going to start getting in our grain fields for the rest of the year up in the hills so we can uh, pull in the wild swine towards May and June. So we should have some great opportunities and some great videos going on that. Um, we'll have the late season goose coming up here, so I guess you know, hopefully we can try to make something out of that. Uh, anyways, Ryer, what, what else have we got going on? Well, we've got some, I think since the last time we had the podcast, we got some new episodes of the community show uh, up on YouTube and Facebook. We got two parts of a Colorado elk hunt with uh, pretty packed full of, of elk footage in that one. I mean, we got we got a lot of elk sightings in that one, or both of them really. So those are up on YouTube. I, what do we call that? Encounters? Is that what we called that? I think it's called Encounters. I'm trying to remember the name of it off the top of my head. Could be. Could be. <laughs> I don't remember the name As of my video. As always, helpful input from Mark Rupi. <laughs> That's me. Uh, so we've got that one, and then we also have, I, th- this is a long one, I think it was 24 minutes, but that's our uh, Wyoming hunt that we did uh, for elk, and that one didn't have as many sightings, but uh, I think the event, it was, it was more, it's more of an adventure. Yeah, it had not many sightings, but a lot of miles. And we call that one Sucking Wind, and if you watch it, I think you'll understand why. <coughs> Should have just called it sucking. Well, that's why we started it with that word. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, Ryer, what, 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 um, what, you what forgot are, the social media, by the oh, way. Okay. Well, uh, why don't you do the social media? I'm never good at the social media. I'll do the social media. I'll listen. I'll listen carefully to how you do it. Right. The, because at, if at three years beginning. of listening hasn't taught you how to do it by now. This one, this is the one that'll do it, right? This is the time. This is the time that I'll finally remember everything that we've got. All right. Well, you can find us on Facebook at Mark Groupie Outdoors because Facebook's ridiculous and won't let us won't let us change the name of that one. Uh, on Instagram, we're the Community Show. Uh, on YouTube, we are the Community Show, and you can check out our websites at www.markgroupieoutdoors.com or www.thecommunityshow.tv. There you go. All right, Mark. Tell us who we got on today. Today we have a gentleman from uh, both Sacramento area, Corey Abel. He Corey is uh, uh, affiliated with the Hoblet Motor Group. Would you call that? Uh, is that yeah, Hoblet uh, dealerships. Uh, the Hoblet dealerships. And uh, for those of you not familiar with it, Hoblet has done has done a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot for the the hunting community here in California. And so uh, we wanted to bring him on and and tell us uh, a little bit about uh, a little bit about Hoblet and uh, and some of the uh, opportunities and um, things that uh, they've provided the outdoor community. Welcome, Corey. Thank you. Yeah, Hoblet is located in Woodland, California, and we also have a Ford store in Calusa. So we have a Ram, Jeep, Chrysler store in Woodland, and then we have our Ford store in Calusa. And uh, we actually got awarded the number one corporate uh, sponsorship award for California waterfowl this year. So Hoblet is a very large supporter of the outdoors from California Deer Association, Ducks Unlimited, the California waterfowl. 
and uh, we're actually the number one Ram truck dealer in the state. Are you last really? Year. Yeah. Wow. Um, and that's in Woodland, in the, yeah. in the in the tiny town of Woodland. You're the largest in the state, huh? We are. I guess you're in the middle of farmland, though. So if people need a Ram tuck, tough truck for farming, I guess that's where they get it, huh? Yep. Yeah. I mean, people come from everywhere to buy from us, so we're right there on I five and one hundred two. Okay. So, well, what's your position with Hoblet? I am the commercial <clears throat> fleet manager for Hoblet, so I focus on the large accounts, but I primarily sell. You know, large scale businesses, contractors, farming, um, people that buy multiple fleet units. Okay, how long you, how long have you been with? Uh, so Hoblet? I just came aboard with Hoblet uh, this last. I've been in there almost a year. So, but been in the auto business my whole life, and uh, started out in GM, um, Ford, and then now I'm Ram and Ford. So okay, it's a great position, great family. Uh, they. Great support of the community on large scale events across the board. Now, are you are you primarily with the the Dodge dealership, or are you just wh- where, whatever they need you for 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 Ram or for Ford? Yeah, I do both. So we're ramping up the Ford line right now, so we can go all the way up to six fifty, seven fifties, five fifties, you know, out of Calusa. Um, so my office is actually in Woodland, but I do work out of the Calusa store as well on the Ford side. So okay. Um, so, so tell us what has has Hoblet always been in, in involved in the hunting community like there, or is, or is this uh, have they just ramped up the last uh, the last few years, or what's what's been their trajectory as far yeah, as I'd say we got heavily involved with CWA the last two or three years. Um, you know, always getting a, a corporate sponsor table at, at the dinners. Um, Primarily, you know, Calusa, Gridley, Woodland, Sacramento. Uh, we did the Black Hawk dinner. This oh, did you? Yeah. So, um, I mean, we get out there. It's very impressive. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I want to join Hoblet is for their outdoor support mm-hmm. and their, you know, kind of conservation support. Yeah, it's, it's great. And you take uh, um, uh, people out hunting just uh, it was customers and or just uh, other people throughout the community I mean you what you guys uh, besides the you know the name on the table thing you you do a fair amount individually don't you yeah I take my primary my big accounts our big customers out duck hunting it's a it's a big perk so uh-huh. it's a good way to show our appreciation to them you know uh-huh. and obviously they're uh, people that enjoy the outdoors as well. So we get them out there in the mm-hmm. outdoors in, in the duck blind and have a good time. Mm-hmm. What what other, so uh, CWA that you were their largest corporate donor this year? You yeah, said? we were, we got the corporate sponsor award uh, in Tahoe a couple months ago. Okay. We got awarded that plaque. So, and what what other um, wildlife conservation groups do you guys uh, yeah so we're heavily to? involved with California Deer Association um, anglers press future so we do the fishing side too we also pro bass tour uh, bass fishing bass reapers in Fairfield uh, we did a river to sea bass tournament I think last year I think we're gonna do one in the you know, next year coming up so Quite a few, you know, from hunting and fishing. Mm-hmm. Um, now, it, it seems like a um, uh, number of dealers that I've talked with, <clears throat> they um, they they shy away from the hunting thing. And whether it's car dealers, tire dealers, stuff like that, I mean, they don't mind selling you their stuff, but they don't always necessarily want their name you know, attached to, well, you know, if you do hunting stuff, I'm not, you know, we like to help you out, but really don't want our name necessarily attached to hunting. Don't want to offend some soccer moms. What well, Hoblet's taking a different approach. Uh, they, they certainly don't mind having their, their name associated with uh, outdoor sports. No, no. I think it's, uh, they look at it. They're a great family um, out of Calusa. And I think they look at it like, you know, it's a way to give back, mm-hmm. but they also give back to a lot of other organizations, probably a lot of soccer clubs, mm-hmm. you know, um, across the board. I mean, we do the farm show. We do a lot of city events in Woodland, Sacramento. Um, we did, we do a lot of events around the area other than hunting and fishing. Mm-hmm. So, okay. They, so all over the, all over the board, uh, hoblet, uh, correct. 
um, do you, uh, now do they, are they set with a number of dealers? Are they just is Hoblet always trying to expand? I mean, do they, that sounds like they've already got a pretty good reach with the number of things they sell. Do they, do they, uh, do you know? Do they? That's probably a corporate secret. If they were going to, yeah, I think they're always <laughs> looking to you know grow. Yeah, um, they've grown a lot in the last three years. Uh-huh. And, uh, huge. So I think um, you know being the number one Ram truck dealer in the state is a pretty big feather in their hat. So yeah, you know, we keep striving to be the best as, as far as on the customer service side and mm-hmm. pricing. So yeah. Now, do you guys have internet sales too? Is there an internet sales yeah. thing? Or? Yeah, primarily. I mean, it's the majority of our sales come from the internet. Oh, they do. Yeah. So, you know, we're being the number one dealer and pricing leader, you know, that's mm-hmm. a lot of internet traffic. Yeah. So now, um, as a as the f- fleet uh, sales manager, do do people come to you or do you go to do you go to people? How, how do, both. Yeah, both. I like to get out and get face to face. I think it's um, kind of something that's gone by the wayside, and I think that. You know, that's what these big business owners need, you know, the face-to-face, getting them out, whether it's hunting or fishing and, you know, showing them that we care about their business. You uh-huh. know, it's just not an online transaction. It's a ongoing repeat biz- business a friendship that we try and create. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my role as I get out face-to-face, meet people, make sure they're getting their service needs taken care of. We pick up and deliver. We do a lot of service from whether it's Cal Fire, the California Highway Patrol, we bring a lot of the service contracts in to the Woodland Truck Center hmm. for service too. So do you have any idea the number of trucks that Hoblet sells a year? I mean, is that a number that you even I could track? get that number, but I know it's, you know, we sell close to, I think, 200 plus trucks a month. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're flying out the door every day in bunches, yeah, but huh? But don't hold me to that number. It's not exact, but I can get that for you. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe Christmas time I can get my wife to get me a new Dodge or something. There you go. <laughs> Dot, you got you to gotta pick a brand, Mark, here. You got, uh, you, you've you been jumping around brands. I mean, are you ever going to pick one or are you just going to go from I'm one a, to the next I'm, to the I'm other? a vehicle whore. Yeah, I mean, you started off with that Ford. I started off with the Ford. Now you got the Chevy. Yeah. Then you're going to go to a Ram, I guess. Hey. What's next? Um, anything with a Hoblet license plate next. So there you uh, go. anything with a Hoblet license plate frame. <clears throat> no, I, I really appreciate what uh, you guys have done and your and your willingness to to put your name out there on on so much of this stuff. Okay, Ryer, I have a question for you. I don't want to answer it. You, That's you, not you, how this you, podcast you, works. You, you had before this podcast started. You said you had an icebreaker. Yeah, well, now the ice is already broken, so you're just now, plowing now through you, the waters. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm disappointed that you, I, I was kind of, you know, in the beginning, kind of left you it out there. Forward, and you, we had to, we had to introduce Corey on here because we couldn't well, just plow into the icebreak well, without Corey, and then you just kept going. Well, I okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do the awkward silence thing. Welcome to Mark Groupie Outdoors. <laughs> That's cricket noises. That was terrible. <laughs> I can't whistle. <laughs> squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> so I just got the number for in December. We did 273 new trucks. 273. That's near 10 a day. Yeah, that's good. It, yeah, and considering there's a cr- Christmas and nearly New Year's and everything in there, that's a that's a lot of that's a lot of vehicles. Yeah, and that's <laughs> just new trucks, new Ram trucks. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so you want the icebreaker now? Yeah, let's let's do an, let's let's do let's do a retro icebreaker. All right. Here's the question. <clears throat> it might be more fun now because it probably wasn't a very good icebreaker that you'd thought of in the first place. So I didn't think of it. I Google it. I'm just going to be honest. Okay. I don't want anybody to attribute any intelligence to me that I don't have. Yeah. Well, you, attributing intelligence in general to you would be something you don't have. Exactly. So, so I'm you know I'm just trying to keep it truthful. Okay. Play it down to your keep earth. it real. Keep it real. All right. Whoever wants to go first, whoever has the strongest opinion on this can go first. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you guys who to go. Uh, would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Um. <laughs> and I'm going to need a why. I'm going to need an answer, and I'm going to need a logical explanation as to why. Ready, um, go. Do, do, am I allowed weapons? Or is it, if, or, you're, 
or, if, or if is you this, have a strategy that involves weapons, or is this mono a uh, mono? Let's hear. You can do both. One mono a mono, and one with weapons. By but the only, way, but only medieval way, weapons. I, only medieval weaponry. I'm I'm triggered by the lack of appropriate use that people use mono a uh, mono. They do like mono e mono or mono, like it means man to man or something like that. Mono a uh, mono is in Spanish hand to hand. So. Join us next week for Spanish lessons with Mark. Spanish <laughs> lessons. So it's not man to man or hand to man or hand to gland or anything like that. It's 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 uh, it's hand, hand hand to hand, like hand to hand combat. Anyways, um, I guess I would rather fight. Um, I, I'm going. I'd rather fight a uh, hundred uh, duck sized horses. Why? Um, drop kick factor. That's fair. I, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can boot them away. Of course, they'll be kicking back, but they're little tiny horse feet uh, that only have the strength, the size of duck feet. I think I can. Not worry about getting swarmed, though. I mean, how fast can you kick? <clears throat> that's a lot of. That's a lot of duck well, sized horses. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to fight one horse size anything having. Uh, Having had my share of uh, wrestling events with horses and uh, and and cattle and anything else, anything that's uh, that size is uh, pretty much. I mean, you ever hold try to hold on to a flapping turkey? I mean, those things will beat the crap out of you. Now imagine it's the size of a horse, and just uh, I I know I can't win that fight. So, I. All right, that's your final answer, Corey. <laughs> I would take up. the hundred. I think I could manage the hundred. Think you manage the keep them coming using the leg sweep. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. So <laughs> I, I would take on the hundred. I wouldn't want to face a big. It'd be a mallard size horse. Is what we're talking about? It'd be a yeah, mallard the size horse, of a horse. Horse size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have no yeah. idea where Mark got that. <laughs> I was not prepared yeah. for Mark to whip out duck golf. Well, <laughs> that thing may, came may, out of nowhere. If it's, if, it, if it's horse size, maybe it makes a like a winning size thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. No, I wouldn't want to tackle a big mallard. I've offended Ryer. I've 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 messed up his sound his sound altogether. Now he's he's going he's going crazy. He's dived onto the dials. He's he's it's got things job. turning everywhere. All right, Corey, now I'm going to amend the question. You can pick one medieval weapon. What do you pick? The catapult. The catapult? Why? Because it's the best traditional, reliable weapon there is out there. How do you defeat 100 duck-sized horses with a catapult, though? You put 5,000 BBs in it. There you it's go. a fair strategy. <laughs> I, I, th I think I would go with um, the boiling oil. Uh, so as is as that the, a weapon or is that a torture device? Well, that's that's as as the as the uh, was it a hundred of them? As a hundred yeah, of them approach the walls of my castle, I would just dump that boiling oil o over on. Onto okay, you don't them. get a castle. You don't get a castle. You just you made up mid a castle. You're gonna blind. Mid medieval time. Well, Do you know what, how many what, what, medieval what, people actually had castles? Not well, even that many. You were probably a peasant. Well, mark. let's be probability. Well, I probably lived within the walls. Uh, I probably lived within the walls. I, knowing myself, I was probably a warrior of you some sort. You can't hardly sort. stay within I'm, your own I, walls, Mark. I may, I may have been even the head knight. You're telling me you're not leaving the I, castle to I, go hunting every day? I may have even been the head knight for this, for this. So, uh, if not the king, I so find I'm, ass I'm, I'm assuming I'm, I'm. If you're within the walls, you're the jester. I'm the jester. You are the jester. All right, I could be the queen. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Mark said it, not me. <laughs> Tune in next time. See um, how see how this conversation would have been good to lead with. See now now everybody's familiar with each other and what kind of weapons they'd use to defeat ducks and horses. So now we can properly go into discussions about more weighty things like politics and and uh, social studies. Well, we we could do we could do a, a cup giveaway for this. What weapon would um, did Mark and Corey choose against? Uh, against a uh, hundred uh, duck sized horses how did the first person or are we gonna randomly pick or what's what if 500 people text us the right answer um, how about uh, caller number five 
All right, so the fifth person, the, the fifth per, the to fifth direct message, the us. fifth person that uh, direct messages us uh, on what weapon that Corey and Mark use against a hundred duck-sized horses wins a, a free uh, community show mug. I think people are going to be real confused as to what what in the heck is going on in this podcast. <laughs> Well, you're, you're the one with the icebreaker, not me. Well, now it's I, in the middle, and so we got just a weird. It's weird now. That's a, so we got to rein it back to the serious questions now. Okay. Um, so, go ahead. This is a more, I guess, political question, and it it goes back to uh, a lot of dealerships and organizations shying away from publicly supporting hunters. You know, there's a lot of dealerships and and people that support hunting and hunters, but they don't want to. Uh, they don't want to say so because the proportion of hunters to non-hunters and the anger that non-hunters put out towards organizations is sometimes lopsided. Um, do you think that that's a good business strategy or do you think that people connect better with brands that are true to who they are and what they want to represent? Well, I think it's a great strategy. I think that if you relay the message that it's all about conservation and protecting the habitat and protecting waterfowl, especially in the state of California where it's dwindling every year, every day. And, uh, you know, I grew up supporting, uh, you know, I grew up in the auto business and we all, we supported Ducks Unlimited. That's how I was raised. I mean, the money goes to the habitat. It doesn't go to shooting ducks. So... If people understand what we're doing and what we're supporting, I think it's, you know, everybody will back it up, you know. If they don't, then we ship them out of California because <laughs> we need the wetlands in California. If people understand yeah, that the wetlands are a huge filter for our ocean, you know, that it's major important now, especially with all the toxicity in the river system and everything. If we don't have the wetlands, we don't have the filter going in the ocean. Yeah, no, it does. It does percolate all, all, all down, all down through there. Um, uh, yeah, and we're, 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 we're losing a lot of it. And also the, you know, the, I, I, I support farmers a hundred percent, but fortunately or unfortunately, the farmers are getting better and better at, at, at farming, which usually means cleaner and cleaner. And there's less ditches, less trees, less, you know brush and junk piles which always held birds and animals and, and, and critters so uh, these uh, these wetlands that are people are going out of their way to create now and everything are are vital, vitally important because a lot of a lot of the edges a lot of other stuff's getting cleaned up mm-hmm. yeah but I think I mean I don't know if you, you can back me up on this but I think that the organizations are improving on acquiring you know a lot more land and a lot yeah. more habitat than they used to when i was younger so i mean i can see them that they are actually going out and acquiring land and getting people that have access to these properties that can enjoy them yeah and i i think some of these uh you know people like to pick on wealthy people but there's a lot of wealthy people that have turned some of their farm ground now into marshes and habitat dinocorda posse just out here off of off of Woodbridge Road has done, I don't know, seven or nine hundred acres of prime farm ground that he's just put into habitat. And uh, I know there's others, others like him out in the Delta and up in the, up in the, uh, up in the Butte Sink or Sac- above Sacramento area. You know, especially you go flying, go on a little airplane ride and look down there mm-hmm. <clears throat> and see it all there. You know, there's uh, a lot of people I think are. Are are doing what you're talking about is putting putting back into habitat and creating that habitat and that filter for 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 everything. Mm-hmm. Yep. You got any more uh, questions or thoughts there, uh, Big R, the Big millennial, R, the millennial, the millennial. What do you say to people who would say that you can conserve without hunting? Well, that, I agree. That's a pretty I, I, I agree you can. You know, I mean, you can always donate to California Waterfowl Association, no matter if you hunt or don't hunt. You know, so I think that everybody needs to support habitat, no matter what it is. I mean, you're going to host a lot of the migratory birds 
that can't be hunted or animals that can't be hunted or shot. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I think they need to support it. I think everybody needs to support it, you know. Yeah, and, you know, I look at um, some of these groups, Humane Society, United States, PETA, whatever, um, groups that directly fight hunters. Um, I look at all the money that these organizations spent fighting each other, legal battles, you know, whatnot. And I think, man, if they just... If, if if we could just combine forces on some of this stuff and r- rather than suing this person or suing that person and say hey we both love wildlife we both love habitats let's let's r- rather than rather than fighting with our money let's let's do something together with our money and we can we you know let's come up with a a plan that you, that we all can live with we hunt this part we don't hunt this part but rather than just fighting with our money let's do something together with our money and i, I would hope uh, I wish we could get to that point, but uh, just like politics these days, you know, it's like you've got to be in your corner and you've got to, you know, if you vary from vary from your position at all, you know, or you work with the enemy, you all of a sudden you are the enemy and, you know, both the right and the left uh, left seem to have that now, you know, if you're not, if you're not 100% for me or 100% against me and we got people knocking heads, so I don't know what's going to change that, but. Don't look at me. You're not. It's up to I'm you. I'm a millennial. You're a millennial. You're a millennial. It's, I don't, know, it's, I, it's I don't up. talk about these things. Yeah. Well, you showed up today. That's a good thing, right? Yeah. For being a millennial. Yeah. 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 You, well, I thought maybe you'd bust out singing "Waiting for the World to Change" or something like that. I mean, that's kind of a millennial song. No, the millennial song. The world I am the change, change, Mark. You are the change. I am the change. Why don't you tell your underwear that? I don't, because I don't change them. <laughs> Everything changes except the underwear. Everyone changes except for the underwear. Got to have one consistent thing in my life. That's right. You know how to put them on yellow in front, brown in back. (laughs) Well, um, I I got another question. Yes. Ideal duck hunting rig or waterfowling rig? Well, of course it's a Ram or a Ford. What kind? I would say two, you know, F-250 or 2500. You know, you got the Cummins or you got the Power Stroke. So it's a great hunting ride. What are you going to rig it out with? Any accessories? I don't know. You just throw throw the ducks in the back and you're good. Make sure it's good and muddy all the time. Yeah. Although I, I have to say, whatever I'm getting, I'm sticking a flatbed on because I can just put, uh, I mean, we see I haul that four-wheeler around all the time. It's just nice to pull that four-wheeler back up in the back of the flatbed and have, mm-hmm. all, have all that room room to, room to throw stuff on. So well, we'll get you a nice rancher special. Okay. No all right, I, I'm, I'm that. up for that. Sounds fancy. <laughs> yeah, I like ran, that rancher special. Um, uh, what else? I think that's about it. It's about the about the end of my questions for our kind enough guest to drop in on us. Um, if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way of getting a hold of you? Or, I mean, obviously anyone can Google these days, but it's just uh, Hoblet Dodge, Hoblet Ford. Yeah, HobletDodge.com or HobletFord.com. Okay, very good. And you can call me direct at 707 580 6126. And I'm Corey Abel, Fleet Commercial Manager for Hoblet Dealerships. Okay. One more time with the phone number 707 580 6126. And we will put that up on this post too, so that people have a can see can see that. And uh, really appreciate you coming in and taking the time today, and uh, appreciate the work that uh, Hoblet's done. And I hope anybody who's got ears on this uh, will uh, recognize that and and support Hoblet also. So thank you very much for your time, and appreciate all your guys' support. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Well. That brings us to the end of our adventure here today. We've got, um, got, uh, oh, I know one thing. If uh, you got a little bit of time left, if you have put in for deer tags this year, you have to the end of this month to re- uh, report whether you were successful or not successful. And if you do not report when you go to uh, apply for your deer tag next year, you will pay an extra 20 bucks for your tag for not uh for not filing a report on whether you were successful or not so guys remember to get out there and do your harvest reports for your deer tag so you're not assess that tag i made that mistake the first year that 
And the problem was is I put in for seven tags for me and all the kids and everything like that. So I had all those unsuccessful <laughs> harvest reports that I had to that I had to pay for. So I will not make a, that mistake again. So um, guys, don't forget to do that. And turkey season's almost on us. Uh, so uh, I'm sure you guys are getting all tuned up for that. And good luck with the rest of the waterfowl season. We will see you. No, well, let's see one more time with the social media. Now, now, Ryer already right. already did it, so you get to do it this time. I get to do it. Yeah. Okay, because you said you just need to listen one more time, and then you'd have it perfect. So we got markgroupyoutdoors dot com, the community show dot tv, uh, Mark Groupie Outdoors on Facebook, the community show on Instagram, and Ryer Porter on Tinder. I'm not on Tinder. You're not on Tinder? No. Okay. Nope. Right, scr- scratch that one. Um, did I miss anything there? You did. Uh, oh, uh, YouTube. You can find us on the community show uh, on our YouTube channel. So check that out. We got lots of great videos there. And uh, we would uh, love to have you guys check them out and love to get your feedback on them. And meantime, we will see you next time at Mark Ruby Outdoors. The podcast. <laughs>